Hello, let's take a quick look at what we achieved in today's live code session where we built a retrieval application using Flowwise AI and the OpenAI large language model. Flowwise is an open source tool for rapidly prototyping large language model applications. And in today's session, I took a large document. It's some 300 pages or 3000 lines of text that I want to explore and interpret. It was written mostly in the 1600s. So it's really difficult to read. It's called the Epistles of George Fox. But you could use this same approach on any knowledge source you have. It could be video transcripts of like a two or three hour video course, anything you want to kind of interrogate and ask questions and uh, ask for interpretations. And so let's see how this works. It's uh, This is just a plain text file, but there's actually a lot of different types of files we can use. And I'm using Upstash, the vector database, and I'll show you this is the result of the vectorization. We took those epistles and we vectorized them. And that just means we converted the text into these numeric vectors. And each vector has the number, the numeric array or vector, and the original text. So you can cross-reference that. And I believe there's a way you can uh, cite the source, like it shows me which lines that came from. And I might even be able to know the text file or article, for example, if you have a Confluence database or YouTube videos. And to do that, we use the Open API, uh, Open AI embeddings. And I ended up using, I tried uh, several models. There was a couple of gotchas. I won't um, explain too much about the struggles, but I will highlight the nuances uh, while we look at this flow. But here's the flow, it's actually pretty straightforward. We'll take one quick step back though. Before that, uh, here's the Flowwise front page. We actually, as a first step, create a document store. And I created a document store locally uh, called George Fox Epistles, and it's being used in one flow here. It has uh, almost uh, 900,000 characters, and it's been split into a, about 1,000 chunks. It comes from a text file. These flows can be, uh, they consist of document loaders, and the, they can come from many sources, you know, Airtable, database confluence documents, CSVs, DocX's, web scraping results, GitHub repositories. Uh, Notion, it's really powerful. PDF files. So almost anywhere you can store text-based knowledge. Uh, you know, again, YouTube video transcripts is another example. You can just copy and paste it or take those files here. Even web search results. So it's quite diverse. And all I did was just add a text file, which is the text file I showed a moment ago. And we ran it through a chunk, chunking splitter. And essentially that looks like this. You upload the file, you know, which I've done already, and it has a few settings. We use a recursive character text splitter. We split it into chunks of a certain size, uh, so about a thousand characters here. And the, they should have some overlap, some degree of overlap. It depends on the structure of your knowledge, the amount of overlap you would want. Um, but you know, around 20 to 40% is probably good. The tutorial I was following, they had a 70% overlap or around 700 characters of these chunks. Uh, that would give you more, if you're wanting to have more text around your search results, you're, it's using um, a similarity search. Uh, so you find a string in this big text, you'll have um, more overlap will give you larger, I think, results and multiple results for the same text because it would be appearing in multiple chunks. Uh, but that has the trade-off of that you're, that you're sending more data to the large language model. So your, your LLM context window uh, increases in size, your requests are larger and it would have more, uh, it would be more resource source intensive and you might even exceed the context window. So tuning this should be done uh, carefully, but going with the defaults is what I did in most cases with the chunk size of 100. And I think I changed the overlap to 200, but it was something like one or 200. Yes, so that's it. And we can preview the chunks here. And this is just chunking data. It's not vectorizing yet. At this point, we're just, we have it split up into a bunch to 1,149 chunks of text. 
and it might be a, a way to annotate additional annotate additional metadata such as the file name well I'll have to look into that later because I would like to cross-reference these uh, and ask which epistle can I refer to or which document that um, citation comes from so here's the flow and it starts over here we just have a, a document store and we selected that George Fox epistles document store this is the uh, flow rise uh, document store and we're using the open AI embeddings here this is one of the gotchas I had the default choice here was um, text embedding three large but the default when I configured this um, unstash vector database was to use a vector size um, I think it was 1100 or 1536 uh, this was the default it may have asked me for that I usually just go with default values uh, but it turns out the default choice for the open AI embeddings component in flow wise is text embedding three large which is like twice as big as the um, default vector length uh, which led to some errors so we have to be careful um, Either, you know, if I go for the default vector length here, which affects um, my search results, then I need to select a, a smaller model here. So I believe you can select text embedding three. I read the docs. It says text embedding three has that length. And I ended up using text embedding ADA, um, but I think either of those should work. Make sure you save every time you make a significant change, like to one of these parameters, make sure you save before you try to upsert the documents there was another gotcha there these don't auto save okay so we passed those embeddings to the upstash vector and I just passed in my uh, credentials here you can you can get those credentials when you configure the database on uh, upstash we're not going to look so much into that part of the process and we have documents and embeddings and this record manager is useful if you want to re-upsert a document that continues to change like confluence pages for example they're under continuous continuous revision but it might be that only a few lines changed and you don't want to put all those those original lines in the database so you will need a record manager we're not using that here because this was like a one-off upsert i'm actually just inserting it i'm not going to be upserting it Great. Now that's going to retrieve a uh, return. It's going to output a retriever. Uh, you can also output the vector store for further processing, perhaps. I'm not sure. But the default is to return a retriever. So we feed that into a retriever tool. And a tool is, is just what essentially an agent can be configured to use. Uh, they can be tools that retrieve text. And feed it into a prompt they can be tools that do calculations or call other apis uh, so these tool using agents are what makes these large language model applications more powerful and gives them capabilities beyond just text generation you know they can do searches and um, even perhaps inter interact with uh, services like creating hotel bookings and things like that when you get more uh, advanced so the tool agent takes in a number of tools that it can use and in the conversation determines which is the appropriate tool to respond with uh, we're going to use a, a bit of memory so it remembers the conversation it remembers what we've talked about and what it, it has said and what have I, I've said so we use a buffer window memory here and then we're using open AI but this um, Flowwise has quite a number of uh, large language models that it supports. So if you have a preference, you might um, you know be working with a local Olama model or something deployed on Hugging Face, for example. Um, there's quite a number of them, and some that aren't even listed here, like Anthropic, Claude, Cohere is a Canadian company. Uh, interesting. So I'm just familiar with OpenAI. And in our model, we're going to use the GPT-40, which is very fast and relatively cheap. So this whole project is only running me 
probably around 10 cents a day and it's all usage based if i don't use it uh, one day to the next it won't charge me anything now i'm only toying with it so my usage could increase if we were to put it in like a more production oriented environment but nonetheless you can get quite far in experimenting with only a few cents that can be a barrier though there's you have to have a key in order to get the open api open ai api key you need to put a credit card on file and things like that so it's not completely free unfortunately but that's why there are options uh, there which might work for uh, other uh, for everyone uh, such as running them locally but just keep in mind everything has a cost if you're running the model locally even though the model itself is free you're going to be paying the cost in your cpu and ram usage and the type of computer you will need to acquire so even then it, it's going to cost something these there are resources involved and i prefer to use uh, managed resources so i don't pay the cost in my time for managing and configuring things and uh, but it's all trade-off, so it's personal choice. But that's about it. So the tool agent gets these. Um, there was one gotcha here that, uh, let's see if I can find that. I was getting a, an error. I should have mentioned this on the retriever tool. Make sure return source documents is off when you're plugging this into the tools agent. I think it's on by default. And when I did that, I was getting a really opaque error that would pop up down here saying it could not iterate over some, uh, some, it said like the vector store couldn't, was not iterable or something. It was pointing me, the error text was pointing me towards this thing, uh, but I had to come over to the retriever and I toggle a switch. Um, I don't understand why or what exactly the error meant, but those are the two biggest hurdles I faced in this process. In hindsight, things work well and it's fairly simple, but it, these hurdles and opaque error messages can completely derail your process. And it could be, even though it's a small thing to toggle a switch, if you don't know to toggle it, you know, there's this gap, you're so close, but so far from the solution. Uh, so there's some usability improvement, I think that could be made in terms of the error messages offering suggestive uh, corrective actions and being more um, relevant. Let's take a quick look at it though now. So we have a chat now and uh, essentially you can go full or like a large screen with your chat. Um, Flowwise gives you uh, a quick interface to interact with uh, your your documents. And in particular, I'm doing some research on uh, an author again, George Fox, who was writing letters called epistles in the 1600s. He was the founder of the Religious Society of Friends. He emphasized the importance of direct personal experience of God, advocating for inward spiritual journey over external rituals and clergy. He taught that the inner light or the presence of God within each person is accessible to all, guiding them towards truth and righteousness. Fox called for simplicity, integrity, and equality, rejecting social hierarchies and advocating for peace and justice. His teachings encouraged communal worship in silence where individuals could speak as moved by the spirit, fostering a, de a deep sense of spiritual community and mutual support. So that's actually very succinct and kind of just helping me understand um, some wisdom and perspective from um, a person writing so many centuries ago. And this tool can be useful for uh, any other type of uh, knowledge that uh, you may be interested in uh, exploring and having a, like a discourse with in a way, a conversation with that knowledge. All right, well, thanks for your time. I hope you're doing well.